But if you want to keep your purple drank cool on the road, you should look at one of these. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Who out there likes dealing with a cooler and ice on long trips? Not this guy. Truth be told, I've been dealing with coolers whenever I go camping or things along those lines um, or longer road trips for quite some time. And uh, the challenge is space. So I have a Pelican 35 liter kind of like ruggedized cooler right now. And a lot of precious space is taken up by ice. And while it does hold the ice very well, um, I have to replace the ice to keep things cool. And so I have been wanting to um, get a vehicle refrigerator for quite some time, but I really didn't want to drop the coin on um, an ARB fridge or a Dometic or like your Snowmaster. I just couldn't justify the cost uh, with how much I would actually use it. And so I looked around for some alternatives read a bunch of reviews, watched a bunch of videos, um, and kind of decided upon this Alpicool 37 quart, 35 liter refrigerator. And um, it actually works out perfect. What I was looking for was something that fit underneath uh, the rear cargo cover of my 4Runner. Um, so it allowed me to kind of keep it concealed. Also gave me enough room for myself um, for a few days worth of food. I didn't need some extravagant refrigerator that was, you know, $1,200 or more. Um, and as of this video, this is on Amazon for around $250. And uh, I found that to be a pretty good deal. So what I'm gonna do is do a, a quick overview of the refrigerator itself, walk you through a couple of the um, features of it. And then I'm going to run it off the Goal Zero Yeti 1000. And so I'm gonna, that's probably how I'm gonna be running it in my vehicle if I'm camping. I'm gonna be running it off from the Goal Zero. Um, I, I have a 12 volt plug in the back of the 4Runner so while I'm driving I can keep it cool with the uh, vehicle on. But I have one battery so I don't wanna actually have to swap out and have dual battery set up to run things long term with the vehicle turned off. And so the, the Yeti is what's gonna be running the fridge most of the time. And so what I'm gonna do is that walk around, kind of turn it on, let you know what it sounds like when the compressor kicks on, a um, couple of the features, and then we'll start running it from this Yeti, see how much power it drains over time from the Yeti to cool down some uh, adult beverages inside this, okay? All right guys, so let's do kind of a quick walk around of the fridge on the outside before we get into the inside. Okay, so obviously you got your normal top here, right? cup holders, which are gonna probably be useless for you. Um, you have one uh, vent on one side here. You've got another vent on this side. And you have um, on the front, your kind of digital controls, which are pretty easy to see and use. You have a handle on the front and you have a handle on the rear, which, um, you know, the way they feel, um, they feel a little, little flimsy. I will give you that. Um, you can tell it's definitely um, not quality like some of those more expensive refrigerators, but I wasn't going for quality. Like I said, I, I couldn't justify the, the cost of those to the use. Um, so um, a latch here in the front that is spring loaded. And again, don't know the quality of it. It seems to be pretty solid, um, but um, your mileage may vary. So inside, you've got a removable basket, which is um, pretty nice. Again, the size is, is fairly large. You can see inside that there are a couple of uh, places where you could put like wine bottles uh, to keep them stable. Um, but, um, you know, they, uh, let me mute that for a second. Um, it looks like there's plenty of room. And then over here on this side, you've got space for, um, you know, to keep things cool. I'm guessing it won't keep it as cool as this interior part here where you kind of have some of the metal um, surrounding the exterior, the interior here. Um, but over here, it looks like you could fit some stuff that you want to keep cool, but maybe not cold. So 
I guess, vegetables or fruit. What I plan on putting in here is uh, six adult beverages and then food in here uh, because I think that would fit there perfectly. Um, again, I'm not a professional here on refrigerators, but it looks like it's well built. Um, it looks like it's gonna do the trick for me, have a little like kind of ball, um, like chain retaining um, for the lid here. Um, and then you have a light over here when it's powered on that will power on uh, when you open the actual lid to kind of light up what you see in here. So, okay, so we're gonna plug this into the goal zero. We're gonna put a couple of beverages in there and we're going to walk through um, the settings on it and we're gonna see how long this takes to cool off. And so I'm gonna actually use the AC uh, adapter here for the goal zero. We're gonna plug it in. My goal zero is at uh, 61% charge right now. And so I'm gonna set a timer here on uh, my phone to um, kind of see how long it takes to actually cool off these beverages. And I'll do like an elapsed time so you can see. And again, this is not scientific. There is nothing scientific that goes on on this channel. This is just somebody, a general user, just trying to check things out and see how it works. And so. I don't got a thermometer to show you before and after temperature. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this until I feel uh, that the temperature has dropped long enough to keep uh, a beverage cold enough to drink that I would, uh, I would enjoy. And that's uh, my gauge. There's the science that's going to happen behind this. And we've got power to the refrigerator. We've got it turned on. Let me see if you can see what we've got here. Currently, we are at... 83 degrees Fahrenheit and um, there are some settings on here um, that will allow you to um, set it to max cool or eco mode and so right now it's on eco mode I am going to set it to max and let it run and then I'm going to set it down set the temperature to uh, 39 degrees so right now we're at 83 uh, I have the temperature on the refrigerator set to 39 degrees. I got it cranking out as much power as it can to cool it quickly. The goal zero is at 61%. And so I'm gonna throw a couple of beverages in here. All right, so these have been sitting out, uh, not in the refrigerator, and I'm gonna throw them in here. And we're gonna see how long it takes for them to get uh, cool enough to drink or get frosty and then we're gonna check the inside of the actual uh, fridge itself also to see uh, you know you'll start to see frost around it etc and see how long it takes to get this actually from 83 degrees down to 39 degrees okay so it took about 20 minutes on uh, max cool and uh, I only drew out about 2% um, of the goal zero to get it down to that. And actually this is continuing to go down. It's at about 36 right now. What I saw from the performance of this as it was doing the max cool to go from 83 to 36 in 20 minutes, the draw on power was about 70 watts during that 20 minutes. Um, and now as it has hit the temperature that it needs to maintain, it's only drawing five watts from the goal zero. So as you are um, starting it up and trying to get it to that cool point, it is uh, gonna draw some power. So um, it's up to you how you wanna do that. If you're moving it between your vehicle, you might wanna cool it down off from your house power to start and then run it off your vehicle so you're drawing much less power. Now what I did do during the um, cool down period, I did switch it to eco um, just to see how much um, wattage dropped on eco mode. And so when it was run on eco mode, it was about 52 watts as it was cooling. And um, again, now we're at five watts just to maintain it. Um, as you saw through the video, the, the sound is very uh, low the compressor as it's on doesn't make a whole lot of noise right now as it's maintaining the compressor isn't on at all Again, this is not scientific. We're not on an outdoors environment where there's going to be temperature fluctuations Which would cause the compressor to kick on and off and may cause the um, You know the temperature to change and the power to change but it's a good baseline to kind of get an idea how it's going to perform or not and um, Let's see here. So inside we do have some frosts around the um, edges forming which is good 
And uh, we do have a beverage that is cool. And I won't say it's cold. It's only been, you know, 20 minutes. Um, and that is with it decreasing um, in temperature from 83 degrees. So it's not cold uh, as much as I'd like it. However, it is cool. And uh, I'm going to have it. So here are my thoughts on this. Uh, kind of showed you how it cooled down. What I like about it. I like the price. I like the fact that it fits perfectly under my rear cover in the cargo area of my Forerunner, which is fantastic for me. I wanted to be able to kind of protect it from view from people. And really, I didn't need a huge fridge to take up a ton of space, just enough to kind of keep some beverages cool and some food if I'm going camping for a weekend. So I really like that. I also like the fact that you can change between max mode and eco mode on it. Um, and it seems like the temperature control is fairly, um, I guess we'll say fairly accurate, but again, I didn't actually test the temperature, but it's easy to use. It feels solid. What I didn't mention is there is a couple of battery protection modes built into the electronics on it. So you can set your um, protection mode for your battery in your vehicle when um, your battery gets to a certain point, this will actually shut off. And there's a couple of functions in there that'll allow you to do that. Um, so not a ton of options on it, but um, a couple that are nice. Um, what, I, what I think that I'm not gonna like about it is uh, I, I don't know the quality of it, right? So I don't know how long this thing's gonna last for. I don't really know who built the compressor for it. So um, I don't know the quality of it. Um, and again, it's you know a Chinese made, um, refrigerator so it could be terrible quality or it could last me for 30 years I, I don't know um, so that's kind of where I'm at I don't, you know the ambiguity of the the quality of it is kind of a downside for me the um, the handles on it uh, I'll just say flat out they kind of they feel kind of cheap on um, the real thin um, they feel like they're like maybe aluminum uh, they're not plastic but the the frame around them is plastic so I don't know how well that's gonna hold up and then this latch here is spring-loaded um, and uh, again, I don't know, you know, after use or continued use of that, how well that's going to hold up. But overall, for the price, if you're looking for something to get you out of a regular cooler and ice, but you really don't want to make that jump to a thousand dollars or more on uh, some of your bigger name um, vehicle refrigerators, and you just want to get out there and, and keep your stuff cool. Take a look at this. Um, again, they have some good prices on Amazon. I'll actually put a link in the description and I am an Amazon affiliate like every single person on uh, YouTube. And so that link I'll identify as an affiliate link. Um, but yeah, take a look at it. And if I end up having problems with this, I'll do a new video and uh, let you know kind of what problems I ran into with it and uh, give you some of that feedback. So thank you all for subscribing for sticking around for checking out this video and listening to me talk non-stop and repeat myself a thousand times i appreciate that i appreciate your patience adult beverages cool adult beverages you have an itch for them i have an itch especially on fridays you should scratch that itch i'm gonna scratch mine in a minute as soon as i get done with this video